Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Mr. Tony Mack, Chairman and CEO of Virpax Pharma. He's joining us to talk about a new drug candidate in the pipeline that uh, uses the intranasal MET nanoparticle dispersion delivery technology called Ancular. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Tony Mack, how are you? Great. How are you? doing well. Uh, if you would, give our listeners a bit of uh, insight into your professional background and talk briefly about Verpax Pharma. Yeah, I've I, been in the pharma industry and finance industry for about 35 years. 25 years of those have been in the pharma side. Um, been a representative, um, also was a national sales director before starting my very first company, um, Prosolis, uh, then a second company, Silex, and now Verpax Pharmaceuticals. Um, so uh, that's a bit of my background. Now, I understand that uh, this new drug candidate is called Ancular. Can you tell us a bit about this, uh, this nasal spray, uh, what stage of development it's, it's in? So, 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 um, so currently we are a preclinical stage a company with this particular asset. Um, it is a nano, it's a nanoparticle delivery. We use it, we call it MET or the molecular envelope technology. We've even gone so far as to call this product a molecular mask. Mm-hmm. We use this molecular envelope technology to deliver other assets. So usually it's a transporter and it's also a protective product. It, it helps to deliver one of our assets as a pain product called Envelta which we have a NIH grant for. We discovered in preclinical um, studies that Ancular is a very positively charged derivative of Tidesan. And, and what that does is it, it, because it's very positively charged, it also attracts negatively charged viruses like corona and mm-hmm. influenza. Mm-hmm. We first discovered this in in vitro studies. From there, we did what's called ex vivo studies, meaning we use human mucosal cells to see if we could get the same results. And what we did as a, we're studying this product as a prophylactic. Mm-hmm. So what we did was we introduced the uh, angular first, then we introduced the virus in the case of influenza and, and the uh, coronavirus. And what we discovered was there was this electrostatic attraction between the negatively charged virus and our angular asset. The angular, once it gets into the nasal, because it's delivered through a nasal device, I should have said this, uh, once it gets there, it acts as a barrier to the epithelial cells, and it prevents the virus itself from attaching to those ACE2 receptors, the spike protein on the coronavirus needs to get into those ACE2 receptors, those spike proteins, in order to infiltrate or penetrate the epithelial cells in the nose where the virus starts. This product puts a coat over that epithelial cell, and it's kind of mucoadhesive. It's like sticky once it gets there, and it prevents the virus from attaching to the receptor cells, those ACE2 receptor cells. It also, because of that electrostatic attraction and its medical adhesive, it wraps around those spike proteins and it actually kills the virus. Mm. So it has two mechanisms. One, it kills the virus, it's vericidal. The other one, it prevents viral entry into the epithelial cells via that ACE2 receptor, or they call it the receptor cell on the epithelial cells. So what types of patients do you envision being able to benefit from using Ancular? Any patients who are uh, trying to prevent some type of respiratory uh, spread like the flu or COVID, as you've mentioned? Or is it, do you envision it being indicated for certain types of respiratory prevention? No, I, I think, you know, any time you're going into a highly populated area, um, first responders, healthcare workers, you know, anybody that's an anti-vaxxer today, transplant or immune compromised patients or at risk patients, DOD, military, federal agencies, airports, public air areas. I think that the way this product can be used is it can be used as a a second barrier, a preventative um, in those highly dense populated areas. Um, it's, it likely would be over the counter, at least based off the FDA pre-I and D guidance that we had. So, 
Um, we do see it being used across the board, even folks who are in between vaccines, if, if that's the case. So um, whether it be influenza, uh, the rhinovirus, or in this case, um, the uh, coronavirus. How often would uh, the spray have to be administered to be as effective as possible? Great question. So in our studies, we discovered that this product does hang into the nasal cavity at least uh, a little over 24 hours. So um, it would it could be used once daily, once every other day, once a week, once a month, depending on where you find yourself uh, in some of these, um, uh, you know, situations where if you're immune compromised and you're going to a, a highly dense populated area where there's you know, a bunch of people around you, uh, you don't want to get the virus, you want to use it. Maybe if you go into a restaurant, you may want to use it. So uh, it, it wouldn't be something that you would use as chronic. It'd be more based on the situation. You know, we hear about different vaccines for different ages of people being approved, not approved and whatnot. Is this something that you envision being able to use in all age groups? I think once we complete the uh, FDA um, uh, pre-IND meetings and we meet with the FDA um, for yeah, after we complete the phase one, we'll know more about where they uh, will allow us to target. Currently, it would likely be targeted in adults. Uh, they may want us to do some other studies um, in uh, pediatrics, which we'll be more than happy to do. Are there other similar compounds in development to your knowledge? And if so, what do you think differentiates Ancular from those other products? I don't know if there are any that are in development that are also being reviewed by the non-prescription division. I know that there are some assets that are out there currently um, but the Kytosam derivative that we have, it's a very well-known product. Um, uh, the FDA deemed it safe enough to be um, go through the non-prescription division. Uh, we're doing those clinical studies just like you would do clinical studies for an RX product. So all of the phase one work, phase two and phase three work that has to be done for an RX product will be done here. I think the thing that might separate our assets uh, uh, with what's going on there right now is that we have possibly two indications. One, which we've talked about a lot as a preventative. The other one could be a situation where we're able to stop some of the side effects from what's called long COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we did dissect the rats in our animal studies. And what we discovered when we did that was there was no viral brain load. Uh, that is huge. And what I mean by long COVID, some of the side effects that happen with long COVID are, you know, a brain fog, you know, mm -hmm. um, things that put people in situations where they have these long term side effects. They can't taste. They can't smell. These are some of the, you know, maybe some of the more minor side effects, but there are more complicated side effects due to long COVID. Uh, based on our animal data, there was no viral brain load. Now we'd have to do more studies but that might be what separates us from what's in development now. Well, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more about Virapax Pharma. Yeah, so um, it would be Virapax, V-I-R-P-A-X, Pharma, P-H-A-R-A-M-A, dot com. And is there anything that you'd like to add briefly for our listeners? Uh, you know, I think, you know, we are in um, the clinical development, preclinical development stage. We'll be completing those studies this year. Uh, and then we'll go to the FDA and likely be into humans sometime in the uh, early part of 2023. Tony, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Lots of great information. Uh, good luck in your endeavors. And I'm hoping to speak with you again as approval comes down. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Tony Mack, chairman and CEO of Verpax Pharma. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.